Elementary Media Center. We're very glad to be here. And um, uh, Mr. Miller, may I impose upon you to lead us in prayer? Thank you very much. May we pray. Our Father, our God, again, we come to say thanks, O Heavenly Father, for all the blessings that you have stored up on us, O Heavenly Father. O Heavenly Father, we want to come again and say thanks for the things that have happened in this community and have pulled this community together, O Heavenly Father. Again, O Heavenly Father, you said you would not leave us, but you would be there for us, O Heavenly Father. O Heavenly Father, again, we just said thanks from the decisions that comes out of this meeting would be betterment for this community. In thy name, for Christ's sake, ever. Amen. 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 At this time, if I could ask the third grade class of Mrs. Bowers to help me lead the Pledge of Allegiance, that just say it in your loudest voice, that would be very nice. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It was very nice to hear all of your voices, so I'll start out with the first part of the mayor's uh, report as we are uh, here in the uh, media center. Thank you, Principal John Cannon, for your hospitality. And Mrs. Bowers, third grade class, has been studying municipal government, so they're here with us together. They've been studying government at large, I believe, but municipal government is part of it, so they're here with us today. And I will remind you, boys and girls, that item number seven is public commentary. If there's anything you'd like to say at today's meeting, if you have any questions or if you have any complaints against the city, you can register them right here on the microphone, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> um, the next thing um, on the mayor's report today is a proclamation. Um, we'll be presenting this today to Ms. Linda Vickers, and I'll do that in just a moment. I'd like to read it first, and we'll take a photograph. Um, Wreaths Across America. Whereas members of the Wreaths Across America Bay County are proud to partner with the City of Lynn Haven and Wreaths Across America, a nonprofit organization that recognizes the courage and sacrifices of United States veterans by placing wreaths on the grave to the fallen during the holiday season. And whereas on December 15, 2018, Wreaths Across America Bay County and Friends will help lay wreaths at Mount Hope Cemetery and Lynn Haven Community Cemetery. And whereas the wreath laying ceremonies are made possible by the generous commitment of Worcester Wreath Company of Harrington, Maine, which donated tens of thousands of wreaths for the nationwide observance this year. And whereas Wreaths Across America began in 2006 as an offshoot of the Arlington National Cemetery Wreath Project, which started in 1992 with the annual placement of wreaths donated by Worcester Wreath Company, and whereas Wreaths Across America Bay County for the 11th consecutive year is partnering, partnering with Wreaths Across America, a nonprofit organization with a mission to remember, honor, and teach about the service and sacrifices of our nation's veterans, and whereas members of the public have sponsored placement of more than 325,000 Worcester Wreath Company wreaths on veterans' graves throughout the United States and abroad, and abroad now, therefore, I, Margo Deal Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, do hereby proclaim December 15, 2018, as Wreaths Across America Day throughout the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, and ask that everyone join me in supporting this worthwhile project. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, to be affixed this fourth day of December 2018. And before I present this proclamation um, to Ms. Vickers, I would also like to invite everyone who is able to do so to join us on December 15th on Saturday morning at 9.30, I believe, at 9 o'clock at the uh, Lynn Haven Mount Hope Cemetery and then over at the Lynn Haven Community Cemetery to help place the wreaths. It's always a beautiful ceremony and it really helps to get everyone in the holiday spirit to recognize our veterans.
I know that he is the type of person that probably does not want his name mentioned, but I'm going to mention it anyway just before today's meeting. Um, Jay Moody, who's been ser uh, serving as our uh, accounting consultant, is doing a fabulous job helping us to keep up with all the FEMA documentation that we've needed since the day of the storm, uh, presented us today um, with a check for $2,000 for the Lynn Haven Hurricane Relief. So thank you so much, Jay. Um, the mayor's report to continue on. Um, I've spent a lot of time, uh, again, just riding around in the streets in Lynn Haven, talking with residents, checking on uh, different things going on in the city. Um, lots of attention on, the, on our debris and how that's going along, and it seems to be moving at a quicker pace this week. I'm really, really pleased with that, and uh, congratulations to all those who are part of that. It looks a lot better. Thank you. Um, I've met with the city manager, I've met with the uh, city accountant and attorney to discuss um, debris collection, uh, FEMA repayment process, some of our thoughts about that. So we're, we're working on some ideas about that. Um, we have our Christmas tree lighting this Friday night in the park at 6.30. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. It's the first time this tree's ever been lit. Lynn Haven Elementary is participating in that ceremony with music. And we'll also have a live band after the lighting with a dance floor in front. It's called Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. So we're going to really kick off uh, the season. So I hope you'll come for that. And then Saturday morning at 10 a.m., we have our uh, Christmas parade. And Santa will be in that. So it's going to be an exciting day. And our toy drive is continuing as I speak. It started November 27th. So if you are out shopping and can pick up an extra toy or two and drop those by the carport behind the service center at Lynn Haven, um, right next to where the old city hall is. Um, we are con collecting toys and we'll be distributing those um, the 12th through the 14th of December to our uh, Lynn Haven families. And uh, so I hope that um, all of you will be able to come for that, uh, that great time. And um, if I have anything else. Mm -hmm. I think that's all that I have today. So I'll uh, move on down to, uh, oh, okay. Commissioner Tender has not arrived yet. You know what, I'm wondering if there may have been a mix up in the, the location. She may have gone to the other location. So we'll, we'll hold off on that. Uh, Commissioner Russell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just got a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you know, the city is doing an amazing job moving forward. And of course, there's always gonna be some growing pains and problems. And I've gotten a couple of um, complaints about permitting uh, with the building department, and I'm happy to say that after investigating it, that it was actually the contractor that's giving the homeowners erroneous information, and it's not the city that's causing the issues. So I'm um, really glad to hear that. And then, of course, there are a couple other things uh, about a trailer for business and stuff like that that um, Michael White is handling uh, as usual, and we're moving forward, and I'm glad where we're at. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Barnes? Um, yes, I had the opportunity to ride around the city uh, this past week. Things are looking better. Uh, the trash is getting picked up a little bit faster. Glad to see that. So I just wanted to say thank you, Mr. City Manager, for that process. Commissioner Friend? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, as we go around and I can also say that I'm getting fewer calls. So that's always good. That means that people are definitely seeing the progress. Looking forward to the, uh, the events that are coming up. I'd just like to add one. Uh, we're going to have tour delights, uh, first annual, hopefully the first annual. Um, so what that's going to be is if you'll, uh, bring out your bikes and light them up and dress up in your, in your Christmas outfits, we're going to just take a quick, you know, go down Pennsylvania and around Second Street. Oh, we'll come back to 10th Street. Just a little circle. And then a, a, a longtime business owner here in uh, Lynn Haven, Miss Mary Sue Adams. I believe she's here to present and to speak with us for a moment. Well, my generous cousin in Selma, Alabama, called me a few weeks back and wanted to know where the city might need. That moves us. Thank you so much again. If, if you're not familiar with Adams Pharmacy, they've, they've been here a long time. Um, when I was four years old, my mom used to pull me to that drugstore in a wagon to get lime ice cream at the fountain, so that tells you how old I am. <laughs> well, that was before we 
I know, the same building. <laughs> okay, moving on to our city manager's report, Mr. White. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I really like to thank uh, several people. There's a lot of our employees have been working uh, around the clock trying to make sure everyone served throughout the city. Uh, the debris pickup has changed gears a little bit. We're headed more into the C and D, the construction and the demolition type debris. Uh, just kind of give the commission and uh, everybody an idea of how much through yesterday was recorded. We have uh, 831,824 cubic yards of debris that has been picked up. Uh, and that's about in 45 days. Uh, so that lets you know it's about 18,350 loads of debris. So that's a big accomplishment in itself. And I really thank uh, Ash Britt and Crowder Glove for, for their participation. Uh, uh, we did get some great information today. We've been working for several years, and even before four years, okay? Before me, we did get the qualifications today that we are getting our $450,000 to finish Porter Park. So, the final uh, through the government, so some of the BP funding. Uh, so, I imagine that's going to be probably one of the first parks that we start putting back together. Uh, so that, that'd be a great one to be something as people come into the city of Lynn Haven from north uh, and next and they can see. Uh, other than that, everything's going pretty pretty smooth and uh, I appreciate you know the support from the commission. Thank you very much. Do we have a city attorney's report? No report. No report from our city attorney. Does that save us money when you don't make a report? Yeah. I'm, just, right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> At this time, we come to the public commentary. If anyone in the audience has a question, a concern, or some, some item you would like to bring to the commission, or if you would like to speak on an item that will be on today's agenda, you're certainly welcome to approach the microphone at this time. Uh, Mrs. Walker. Janet Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. In the News Herald, excuse me, on Monday, November the 26th, there was a notice of a public hearing City of Lynn Haven Comprehensive Plan Amendment. It's for Ordinance 1067, which is on the agenda today as a public hearing and as a line item in old business. Unfortunately, on this particular uh, notice, it did not have the correct meeting space. Will that affect today's public hearing um, viability? I'm thinking that the reason that the location was not changed is because probably the announcement was made before the vote last Tuesday, but I'll let our, I'll deflect to our city attorney. You want to make a comment? Okay. There are uh, very specific public noticing requirements and they have to be, they have to take place in advance. And so the notices had gone to the paper. Um, they were in the paper. So what I did, because the venue was just changed last week, is I had signs put on the other building so there are notices put on the doors of the other building telling people that the meeting is here and they were put up this morning. Okay. And Mayor, with that being said, along with the fact that yeah. Mayor, with that being said, along with the fact that the public notices were issued well before the meeting, giving the public notice of the issue an opportunity, as well as opportunity if they show up at the wrong building to be notified, I would say that the commission is, should feel free to move forward. Was there anything else, Ms. Walker? No, go ahead. You still have time. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, also in the News Herald on Saturday, November the 24th, there was a report from the mayor of Parker, and he listed very much what um, Mr. White mentioned today about the special debris pickup cubic feet, is it? Or? C and D. Cubic yards. Okay. Cubic yards. Cubic yards, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and he also went into the fact of listing how much money um, has been spent by the city of Parker and how much he had hoped to get back by FEMA and the different um, calculation where different organizations were paying for some of it, plus what would be left over then for the city people of Parker to have to pay. And he said, of course, Parker's smaller than Lynn Haven. And he mentioned that Parker only has a $5 million a year budget total in total, and that it was going to be costing them a little over $4 million to take care of that expense. Do we have any type of figures here in Lynn Haven yet on the amount that has been spent or that we're projecting that might be spent and how it's going to affect our yearly budget? 
Um, I will certainly uh, allow and, and ask for Mr. Uh, White to if he'd give you the figures if he has them available of what has been spent thus far. I, I, I have, you know, I know what bills have come in at this point, but, um, and I was really not going to address, but I think I'll go back and address now. There was um, a memo sent out by the city that, that was posted for a while on the website and then taken back down because we had a discussion about it. It was also sent to the commission earlier this week about what trash could be placed, what we could be reimbursed for, that kind of thing. And so what I requested of the city manager is that we wait, we not jump ahead, that we not, uh, some of the cities have already bonded money, some people have borrowed money. I've asked that we wait and that we discuss this further and the biggest thing that I'm asking for the wait on is at this point I am involved in negotiations and scheduling meetings with our government officials from the district, state, and even the federal level to push forward the mandate of 100% FEMA reimbursement, not only to Lynn Haven, but to every city that's been affected by the storm because it's the third, according at this point, they're saying it's the third most catastrophic, but I think as the research continues, they may find that it's even more than just the third most catastrophic storm. So. I think that it's for us to bond money, or really for any, any cities to bond money or to be borrowing ahead at, that, at this point, I think is jumping the gun. I think we need to stay engaged with FEMA, we need to stay engaged with our government officials that we want to look at 100% reimbursement with possibly some of that reimbursement coming early. And so that's where we are right now. That's, where, that's my position and that's what I have asked the city manager to do. And I've, I've also spoken with our city accounting consultant as well as our attorney about this. And we'll be meeting again on Monday and talking about who we've contacted. And I'll and I'll what I really want to do, and I'll go on record to say this, is once I have set appointments and once I've had discussions with everyone I want to discuss with, I also want to bring in other city leaders and have a, a meeting that involves all of us because this is this is a funding for a catastrophic storm that, that we as cities cannot possibly pay. Taking out bonds, taking out loans, all of that is, is a band-aid. We need something that's going to fix it permanently. And so I think that, again, we don't need to rush into it, that we need to take our time. We need to make sure that all officials, we, we need to be told why this will not be reimbursed at a 100% rate, if you look back in history. So that's the position I've taken, that there's no reason to hurry ahead because taking out a bond only means that, it doesn't mean that you've paid a bill, it just means that you've gone further into debt. So that's where I am on it. So. Yes, Mr. Uh, did you want any other information from Mr. White, Mrs. Walker? Or are you good? I don't know. Okay, thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, 